Hello everyone and welcome to the inaugural video of Marvel Champions, a game that's new to me but not new to existence because it's been around for like seven, eight years or something. It's been around for a while. But uh, recently I got into the Transformers deck building game and that kind of opened me up into wanting to try out more. This is a living card game. It's not quite the exact same style as the Transformers one that I've done a few videos on on the channel. But to break up the miniature game videos, I thought, I fancy another card game. I played one game of this myself off camera. I actually lost. I kept playing on after I hit a lose condition just because I wanted more experience and I, I didn't hit a lose condition after that. So I think I just got unlucky with a, a certain card that just really, really was bad timing. But that's the nature of stuff. And we're just using content from the core box today. So it's uh, you get a choice between Spider-Man and Captain Marvel or you can use both if you wanted to going up against Rhino, that's kind of like the suggested first villain you take on. I'll be giving a general overview of how it plays as always for these inaugural videos and as for viewer verdicts in particular, after you watch the video take to the comment section and see there whether you are for or against this being a bit more regular on the channel. I will hopefully make it as watchable as possible for anyone who is also not super familiar with it. For those of you who have potentially been playing this for years, do not expect perfect play. Do not expect the right move to be made every single time and I might forget stuff especially if I'm rambling at the time like putting threat on the top of every villain turn etc. I think that about covers it. So you can use as much or as little words as you want for against, go into detail, whatever you like and we might see more of this in the future or this might just be a one-off. Who knows. It's also one of two planned viewer verdicts I've got recording in the next week so look out for another one soon. Anyway, let's look over how you play Marvel Champions. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. So the main goal in a match of Marvel Champions after you have made a deck according to instructions, which I'm not going to go into detail about, that doesn't really matter for the purposes of you viewing this, but you face a villain, the villain has a scheme. In this case, Rhino is doing the break-in, which is this card here. He has a scheme stat and an attack stat. If you are in hero form, he will attack you as part of his turn. If you are in alter ego form, Peter Parker, if you saw him just before, he schemes instead, which puts additional threat on the, the main scheme he's doing. If it ever gets to a certain amount, which in this case is seven, it's seven per player. I'm doing solo, so seven, you lose. That's one of the lose conditions. The other lose condition is you die, or all heroes die if you're playing with multiple uh, that's just hit 0 HP. Reno has two forms. His first form has 14 health. That's the dial for up there. Peter has 10 health. I've got his dial off camera, but it's down here as well. And it does come with a little blurb here. So that just tells you how to make the deck. You can use some modular stuff, like it doesn't have to have the set side villains that appear. And then it just says advance to stage 1B, which is just flip it over and boom, you're ready. Sometimes it has setup stuff if it's more complicated. This is super basic specifically because it's meant to be your first villain that you face a few times to get used to the game. And it tells you how much threat it gets at the start of the game, I think. And then during the enemy turn, it gets one threat per player. That's what that symbol means. So that is what Rhino is doing. He's breaking in somewhere. Is that lore there? Rhino is trying to smash through the facility wall and steal a shipment of Vibranium. You must stop him. This is the encounter deck. You form that as part of the villains. He uses that to attack you. He uses that to bring out upgrades for himself, minions that you have to fight, and just generally get in your way. And on the other half of the table, we have who I'm playing as. As I said, I was playing as Spider-Man slash Peter Parker. You start on your alter ego, or sorry, on your non-hero side, which is alter ego, I think. Either way, it doesn't matter. And once per turn, you can choose to flip your card, and whatever side you're on, you flip to the other one. When you're on this form, you usually get some kind of special ability, and you can recover health. And you hide, essentially, because you're not superheroing. On your superhero side, you can thwart a scheme to try and bring that total down so it doesn't hit the lose condition. You can attack the villain to do damage to them, or you can choose to tap yourself to defend instead, in which case you reduce the damage the villain is doing to you by your defense stat. Uh, you did see the attack stat on Rhino just before, he draws an additional card to boost up his attack, so he's not only hitting for two. Yeah, the most I've had him hit me for, I think, was five, which was pretty scary because that's half Peter's health. So it is like it can come at you fast all of a sudden and just do something nasty. Anyway, this is the pre built deck that comes in the core box. I have not changed it in any way, shape, or form. It has a mixture of allies, upgrades, 
uh, just general cards all themed around one of four aspects I think which is like leadership, uh, courage, something something and there's a bunch of energy types in the game as well which is genius, strength, energy and a wild card that can count as whatever. You discard cards, you get the energy value that's on the bottom left of them and that's the resource you now have to spend. You use those to play cards, the cost of a card is on the top left. I'll show you all this once we draw obviously. And I think that's about it, really. You, you just have to try and manage your health, manage the enemy's health, manage the enemy's threat. It will become more complicated as we go, but that's the gist as you start. And as I say, you start on your alter ego side, and that matters because Peter has a different hand size depending on whether or not he is on his hero side or his alter ego side. So as we start the game, I'll be drawing six cards, and on his hero side he draws five. He also has a keyword genius that probably won't matter in most instances and if you choose to leave him well actually you, you can choose to tap him to get a science resource which helps you play more cards if you tap him and then choose to flip to hero mode which you're allowed to do once per turn he's still tapped he doesn't untap so you've got to keep that in mind as well i think that about covers it i, I hopefully explained that reasonably enough trust me just watch a couple of turns it's actually pretty basic in terms of just this flow, especially because we're fighting a villain that's not doing anything complicated. There might be status effects and things to worry about, but we'll cover that when it happens. So, let's give this a go. So, we're going to start the game by drawing six cards, and you can keep as many as you want, and then mulligan any that you do not want. So that is three, four, five, six. What is Peter's aspect again? Justice. So yellow cards are justice themed, and that's the theme of his deck. So this is our initial hand, and I can get rid of whatever I want. There is the resource you get if you just use it to spend to pay, play something, the cost to play something in the top left. I'm holding on to backflip because that saved me so much in the test game. It lets you take no damage when the enemy hits you. That's good for doing an attack. Power of Justice is good as well. Daredevil is good, but he costs a lot to get out. I think I'm going to mulligan the web swing, and we just discard that, draw another one. And this is our starting hand, we've got Jessica Jones. So, I'll have to do cuts while I just plan out what I'm doing, because I'm aware I'm going to be taking a while. I won't be playing quickly. We will go deliberately slow for the first turn or two, and then I'll try and speed up. But I'm going to think about what I'm doing off camera, so I can just show you me doing it. Alright, I have thought through my turn, and we are going to do this. We're going to spend interrogation room to get one of the yellow resources, that's called energy. You can use any energy or any resource type to spend spend on anything it's just there's certain bonuses like for instance we're going to get rid of the power of justice which counts as one of any resource unless you're paying for a yellow card in which case it counts as two so now i've got a total of three energy and then we're going to get rid of jessica jones for a total of four energy and i'm going to put daredevil on the field so daredevil is an ally you can have a maximum of three allies he has a special response after he thwarts he does one damage to an enemy he has a thwart of two, attack of two, but these little markers underneath means that after he does either of those actions, he takes damage equal to the number of markers, unfortunately. So when he does either of those, he'll take one damage, and he has three health. I have two cards left in my hand. I want to keep both of those, so we're basically done, except for hero actions. So I'm just going to put those cards I spent in my discard pile. I am choosing to become the spider man. And then we decide what we're doing with our turn, and because I have a freebie to get out of getting attacked in that backflip card, I'm pretty safe to say I'm going to tap for 2 damage, and I'm going to tap Daredevil for 2 damage. So Daredevil takes 1 damage, just because that's how allies work, he has 2 health left, and between them they did 4 damage to Rhino, so that's him down to 10. Just like that. At the end of your turn, let me just go through this, I have the quick thing here. After all players have finished their turn, each player simultaneously discards any number of cards from their hand. I'm keeping the two I have, I want them. Draw up to their hand size and ready any of their exhausted cards. So we ready up these two. I draw only three cards because Spider-Man's hand size is one less than Peter's. I got two enhanced Spider-Sense and Mockingbird. She's good because she can stun enemies. And then we move on to the villain phase. So there's some steps to follow in the villain phase, it's super simple. Step one, place one threat on the main scheme. That's the part I sometimes forget, I hope to remember now because we're on camera. But that's one threat. Gets to seven, that's one of the lose conditions. Two, the villain and each engaged minion, there's no minions, activate once in player order. I'm playing solo so it's just me. If you're in hero form, they attack you. Now, we'll cover that in a second. You then also 
give an encounter card out and you resolve an encounter card against each player and then that's it and then if there was multiple players you pass on the first player token so i'm in hero form that means rhino is attacking me for two plus whatever is in the bottom right corner of this card so he gets a little boost i could choose to make daredevil take it and die and get thrown into the discard pile but i am going to use that uh, backflip card which is an interrupt when you would take any amount of damage from an attack, prevent all that damage. I'm definitely taking damage from whatever this is. So it's base 2 damage. And you just go by... This is a special thing for Peter that you put into the deck, incidentally. But when you're doing it for a boost, you only pay attention to the bottom right. You don't matter. It doesn't matter about anything else on the card. So Rhino was attacking for a total of 4 there. 2 on his card, plus 2 on this card. That goes into discard. But I'm playing backflip to negate all the damage and take 0. Then... We draw another card from the counter deck, and this one we do the text on, depending on what it is. Hard to keep down. It's a treachery card. When revealed, Rhino heals 4 damage. If no damage was healed, it gains Surge. Surge just means you draw another card. So, all that damage I did in turn 1 to Rhino, well, he just got it back. He is back to full health. So, not much change there, and then it just rolls around to the player turn. So it did occur to me I could have spent a card and then played one of the Enhanced Spider Senses to counter that Treachery card doing anything. I didn't, though, no, so I'm just going to play on. And we only have four cards because I spent one on in the defense. And I want Mockingbird out. She costs three, so I'm going to have to get rid of my entire hand here. And I'm going to place her on the field. Again, you can have a maximum of three allies, although I think there's a card that lets you have more. Um, but I'll just put her there, move them along a little bit. And... After she enters play, stun an enemy. Stun means Rhino is not going to be attacking this round. And then, we're going to have Daredevil thwart. So he takes one damage from doing that. And he thwarts, but he also deals one damage to an enemy when he thwarts. So Rhino takes one damage. Mockingbird, I'm going to have her attack for one damage. Which means she takes one damage as well, because that's just how allies work. I need to go around this side of the camera and grab another one damage icon. Already using more than I did in the test game I did. So one damage on Mockingbird, she has two health left. And I'm going to attack with Peter as well, so I'll just tip that sideways a little bit. So Rhino is back down to ten health again. And then we start again. So I draw five cards, two, three, four, five, because my hand was empty. We ready up our cards. And we see what we get. We have Great Responsibility, Spider Tracker, another Web Kick, First Aid to Heal, and just a Heroic Intuition, which is a generic card with Silver Sable on it. It is a permanent upgrade, though, which makes your thwart better, which is pretty good for Peter, because his base thwart is bad. So, over to the villain's turn. One threat goes on the main scheme. Other schemes can appear that sometimes you have to deal with first, or you can ignore them, but they give benefits to the boss. Uh, Rhino would attack, he is stunned. The next time this character would attack, discard this status card instead. I'm not sure if you're supposed to discard the boost he would have had for that. I played it that you didn't, that might be wrong. If it is, by all means let me know. You still resolve an encounter card though. Advance, when revealed, the villain schemes. So, he's got a base scheme of 1, and he gets a boost for it presumably, so that is 2. So he places, well, I'll just put a 3 on there and remove the 1. So all of a sudden, the break-in, which is the main scheme, is at 3 out of the 7 it needs to win. So that's the kind of stuff that can just suddenly creep up on you and then give you this new problem that you have to deal with instead of just trying to punch your rhino unconscious. You know, in this case, just to show like some of the functionality of specifically how Spider-Man plays, I am going to retcon it a little bit that I played great responsibility when that happened. Hero interrupt, when any amount of threat would be placed on a scheme, you take it as damage instead. So actually, that's going to stay at one threat. Peter takes two, but we're into my turn anyway, and I'm going to burn a spider tracker, because there's no minions to attach it to anyway, to play first aid, which means I heal two, and we're back to full health. So I now have only two cards in my hand, but that's a way to avoid that thwart, uh, that scheme rather, from playing out. The two cards I have left in my hand, I don't have enough power to play. So we're just going to go straight to actions then. And let's see, what's the best bang for my buck? If Daredevil attacks, 
he is disposed of, so I might as well have him tank Rhino's attack this turn. So he's going to do nothing. Mockingbird is going to thwart for one self damage, unfortunately. But that just goes back down to zero. And Peter's going to hit Rhino to bring him down to eight. Again, he doesn't just have eight. He goes back up to full health when he's in phase two. And I think he actually gets plus one health on that side. Something like that. So I'm going to keep those two cards in my hand, which means I am drawing three. Surveillance team, that's a good one. Energy, which is just two of the that yellow resource type. And webbed up, which is a very expensive card to play, but it essentially it gives you two free turns. So that might be worth it, depending on what Rhino does. And we can just go straight into his turn, really, before I do another break and consider what I'm doing with my cards. He is going to attack, because I'm in hero form. I'm going to have Daredevil tank the hit and get murderized by it, but let's see how much damage. Two plus... Ooh, two plus two was Shocker's card. That's four damage. Mr. Matt Murdock goes into the discard pile. He can, and probably will, appear later. Oh yeah, she should have read it up at the end of the turn, of course. Still do the encounter card, though. Stampede, when revealed, I am in hero form. Rhino attacks you. If a character is damaged by this attack, the character is stunned. Hmm. I guess now is the point at which I'm allowed to choose whether I block. I could take no damage. I've got no way of mitigating except making Mockingbird take the hit for me. But even then... Uh, Rhino attacks you if, the, if a character is damaged by this attack. That character is stunned. You know, I'm going to let Mock Mockingbird take the hit. So, 2 damage plus... Two, yeah, it would have hurt. So, unfortunately, she's gone as well. That is a shame. This goes into there. Hopefully that was all done correctly. And we're back around to Peter's turn. It was not done correctly, did you spot it? I told you, it's the easiest thing to forget. Top of the villain turn. One threat on the main scheme. There we go, we're all caught up. For this turn, what could I do? This might be a good time to do webbed up. Uh, I've got, I want to spend a total of six energy. I don't have six energy. I have, at best, uh, let's see, I can choose that to play that and then hold off for another turn. Um, yeah, okay, so we'll use the card with Thor on it, but it's just two of that resource, which is enough to play Surveillance Team. You put three counters on it when you place it, you exhaust it once per turn maximum to remove one threat from something. I'm just going to put two on it because I'm immediately to output it under here actually because it's just an upgrade, not a person. And we're going to immediately move, remove that one threat on there. I used up that card. And then I guess to give Peter an upgrade, I'll spend both those resources, which is enough to equip this upgrade, which is just plus one thwart. Just a a stat upgrade, nothing, uh, nothing fancy. Let's swap these, since that's not going to ever need to be tapped, since it's just an upgrade, and that just means in general he can thwart for two now. And for Peter's turn, he'll just attack Rhino for two. Put Rhino's first form down to six. End of turn, he'd write himself this writes himself, and I draw back up to five. One, two, three, four, five. We have. Tenacity, Swinging Web Kick, another Surveillance Team, another Spider Tracker, that's the one you want to see, and Backflip so we can negate an attack that's probably about to come at us. Start of the villain turn, one threat. I'm in hero form, Rhino is attacking for two plus nothing. So it's just two damage, so which means I could have safely blocked it. Um, I didn't block it though, will I just take the damage and save the Backflip for a harder hit? Yeah, I think that might be the smarter bet. So I'm going to take the damage. Peter goes from 10 health down to 8. Will I live to regret that? Well, I might. Peter might not. So he's got 8 health left. Just put that to one side there. And then encounter card. I'm tough. When revealed, give Rhino a tough status card. If Rhino already has a tough status card, draw another one. Uh, I could... Can I counter that? No, I cannot counter that. So he gets a tough status card. I don't actually know what that does. I haven't experienced a tough one yet. I've only seen stunned and confused. So let's look that out and see what it does together. The next time this character would take any amount of damage... Oh, it's a free hit. Ooh, that's rough. Okay, so Rhino just takes a free hit. When I only have one person on the field capable of attacking, that is annoying. 
Alright, I have a turn planned that I think gets around him being tough. First of all, we're taking another marker off of surveillance team to remove that threat to build up. Again, you just have to try and keep it down while also doing your job. I'm not going to do anything else except attack. So we attack for two, but it doesn't matter because he's tough. The tough absorbs it. But now I am going to spend three cards for a total of three resources. Again, it doesn't matter what type, but they're all worth one each. Two of them are worth energy. One of them is worth genius. To play Swinging Web Kick. Hero action, deal eight damage to an enemy. Tally-ho, Spider-Man. So I presume... That is a separate thing from your basic attack and you're allowed to do both. If I'm not, then that's giving me a massive advantage that I wouldn't have, so apologies if that is incorrect. I read over the bit in the rulebook for actions and it doesn't seem to have any limitation. So that means Rhino does hit zero. So what happens is, he gets annoyed. He goes up by plus one attack. And... How much health? Fifteen. So he does go up. So he's up to fifteen health. And when revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for the breaking and taking side scheme and reveal it. And then shuffle the encounter deck. We haven't seen that yet, so I will look for it. Breaking and scaring, was it? Breaking and scaring. Where are you? Breaking and taking. Sorry, there it is. So that is another scheme in place. Let me just shuffle this real quick while reading it. Breaking and taking. Side scheme. Rhino is breaking things and taking them. Oh, you don't say. When revealed, place an additional one threat per player here. Okay. Is that on top of two? I'm going to have to check if that's the amount it starts with, or if it just starts with one. Because keep in mind, it's still technically my turn. So it's a hazard. Deal plus one encounter card during the villain phase. Oh, that's really nasty. So I draw two encounter cards against myself. That is especially bad. All right, there we go. I have shuffled the encounter deck. I think I'm ready to end my turn. I'm just going to double check if that's how much threat it should start on, so it should actually have three rather than one per person, so let me just go do that. Alright, that is indeed the starting threat, so it's plus one per player, so it's actually at three. Also, for the, the break-in, that is the acceleration, so that's how much it goes up by if you put an acceleration token on it, I think, so it actually started at zero. You still put one on it at the top of every villain phase, so that's that's fine. But I just misunderstood that top icon, so just wanted to clarify that. So anyway, I am ending my turn there. Next turn I can get rid of that. Thanks to surveillance team still having one left. But I'm okay, because I've got a backflip card in hand. So I'm only drawing four, because I'm keeping that card for sure. Because it's Peter's best card, in my opinion. i got another great responsibility, an interrogation room, a helicarrier, and Black Cat as a potential ally. She's pretty cheap to come out, but I think you have to discard some of your cards. So then we move to Rhino's turn. He is very scary damage-wise now, and he is going to attack, so he's hitting Peter. For four damage, which would be nasty, had I not had a backflip. So that reduces the damage down to zero, thankfully. And then I have to draw two encounter cards against him. Number one, Shadow of the Past. When revealed, reveal your set-aside nemesis minion and put it into play engaged with you. Oh no. Reveal your set-aside nemesis side scheme and put that into play. Shuffle the rest of the set-aside nemesis encounter cards into your encounter deck. If your nemesis minion does not enter the game this way, gain surge. So yeah, every character has like a side minion or nemesis. In this case, it is the Vulture. So, let's go through that again. Reveal your set-aside nemesis and his... Well, there is Vulture. Let's put him there. His set-aside... Uh, side scheme is highway robbery, so that's in play as well. And then he has three, two attacks and oh, three attacks. So they're going to have to get shuffled into the counter deck. I'll do that in a second. I think that's it. And then we still need to do one more encounter card. That's really nasty. All right, the other encounter card. Gang up when revealed. The villain and each minion engaged with you attacks you. Oh, that's awful. That is terrible. All right, well, Rhino attacks. I'm going to have to defend here. Like, there's no question about it. I have to defend, don't I? Uh, at what point do I have to decide whether I'm defending? Like, I, am I allowed to see the damage? You know, we're, <laughs> otherwise we might lose. So that's got no extra icon, so he's hitting for three. Uh, Rhino's... I mean, Vulture's got attack three as well, huh? 
Also, I think once he's engaged with you, he gets an attack, so he actually should have attacked twice. Wow, we got so unlucky. So I'm going to block Rhino's damage. This is the first attack Vulture did, so that's three damage. And then the second one was five damage. Five, six, seven, eight. He actually just killed us, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, did I do everything right there? Uh, as in, like, did, was no rule incorrect and I just got super unlucky? Because he has Quick Strike. After this minion engages you, you it attacks. So yeah, he would have attacked once. And then that Treachery card made him attack twice. Life comes at you fast. That was abruptly over. I had, I had a plan and everything. I was going to thwart for two with Spider-Man surveillance team, get rid of that. It was the double encounter card that did it, though. <laughs> had that breaking and taking just not been there. Yeah, I, I, let me look over it, but yeah, I, I think we legit just died. <laughs> yeah, as far as I can tell, that was just a legit really bad set of cards to happen. Even if there was only one encounter card drawn, like if Breaking and Taking hadn't been there, it still would have been Vulture appearing, which means he still would have attacked for the three. Um, Rhino still would have attacked for his three, so he still would have taken six damage. We would have been alive on two, but it was just a very, very bad luck set of cards to draw there. For the record, Highway of Robbery, when it comes into effect, each player places a random card from their hand here face down because it's been stolen, and then when you defeat Vulture, you get the card back. So, we would have lost the card. I guess that teaches you to maybe keep a, an ally around for situations like that, instead of just willy-nilly letting them get destroyed. Although I was doing that in the first game I played and it was working out fine. I, I, I guess I just got well, I think I got unlucky here rather than got lucky there, to be honest. That was just a really nasty set of cards that happened to be drawn. So I don't know if that's a fair look at the game. Um, I, I, As I say, I played the game off camera. It went... well, I lost that one as well, but... It went fine. I think my management of allies is what cost me there, along with bad luck. But for those of you who are more familiar with the game, by all means, tell me. I still have fun with it, and I had fun with the other game I played off-camera, and I do want to play more, but I can always just play it for myself if it's not super interesting. I hope I at least presented it in a good way to at least give it a fair shot, even if I did get annihilated a lot quicker than I thought I would. Either way, thank you very much for watching. Do let me know in the comments whether you're for or against more of this on the channel, and if you are for more, I will try and do better next time. I'm open to some advice for using the Spider-Man base deck because uh, clearly I, I, I need to, uh, like I don't see any value in the the web kicks because they're so expensive to play and all webbed up being four feels like you're using your whole hand to gain two turns so really you're only getting one turn. So it's, I don't know, I'm open to advice on that. Either way, thank you for watching and giving this a chance. There will be another viewer verdict soon for a different game, so keep an eye out for that as well. And if you can spare a minute, maybe go take a look at the channel sponsor. They carry this game, along with basically everything else I carry, uh, or play rather. Thank you for watching, and ta-ta for now.